distribution strategy. So firstly, we will understand the meaning of distribution strategy. Physical distribution or place is one of the four elements of the marketing mix. An organization or set of organizations involved in the process of making a product or service available for use or consumption by a consumer or business user. This refers to how an organization will distribute the product or service they are offering to, to the end user. The organization must distribute the product to the user at the right place at the right time. Efficient and effective distribution is important if the organization is to meet its overall marketing objectives. If an organization underestimates demand and customers cannot purchase products because of its profitability will be affected. Depending on the type of product being distributed, there are three common distribution strategies available. Intensive distribution. It is used commonly to distribute low-priced or impulse purchase products. X for example, chocolates, soft drinks. Exclusive distribution. It involves limiting distribution to a single outlet. The product is usually high-priced and requires the intermediary to place much detail in its sell. An example would be the sale of vehicles through exclusive dealers. Selective distribution. Here, a small number of retail outlets are chosen to distribute the product. Selective distribution is common with products such as computers, televisions, household appliances where consumers are willing to shop around and where manufacturers want a large geographical spread. After studying this lesson, we should be able to Understand service location decisions. Analyze the factors influencing distribution channels. Enumerate the strategies for effective distribution through intermediaries. Now let's discuss service location decisions. Business location implies a much broader, more encompassing view of a place. A business location versus a site location incorporates both quantitative and qualitative factors associated with a specific business and it must be evaluated in the context of its ability to help achieve overall business goals. Depending upon the actual business functions that will occur at a specific location, the appropriate weighting of the various attributes typically becomes an exercise of assembling all of the essential business factors and considering them in the context of meeting overall business goals. The phases outlined below provide a screening process for evaluating the suitability of a specific site for its intended business purposes and strategic objectives. Phase 1 Develops location strategy from business strategy. Preliminary cost profile is used to determine relative emphasis on key qualitative and quantitative business criteria like labor, Operational requirements, operating costs, quality of life of business, operating environment, others. Phase 2. A screening process based on weighted location attributes is used to assess an initial list of communities based on threshold company requirements. This yields a narrowed list of potentially suitable markets for detailed analysis. Labor market attributes, cost structure, operating environment, other threshold attributes. Phase 3 prepares geo-variable cost comparisons reflecting incremental cash flow analysis of potential locations. The resulting trade-off analysis weighs qualitative factors versus geo-variable operating costs and creates a short list of communities or markets. Phase 4 there is no substitute for in-market corroboration of primary and secondary due diligence data. Ultimately, field visits yield real-time information and inform key decision makers of the merits of the attributes they have most heavily weighted during the process. The visits also provide the forum for comparing the merits of specific sites and transaction terms in the markets. Potential site or building options, locational attributes, incentive possibilities, human resource issues, labor market considerations, logistics infrastructure. 
Now let's study how to design an effective distribution channel. For this, four decisions are to be taken, which are specifying the role of distribution, selecting the type of channel, determining the intensity of distribution, choosing specific intermediaries. Firstly, the service firm should be clear about the role it envisages of distribution in the context of the other elements of its marketing mix. The distribution should synchronize with the other marketing orientation and objectives. ICICI Bank was the first to extensively use ATMs to achieve quick growth, market penetration and avoid the dangers of variability. The selection of distribution is affected by many factors which play significant role while choosing the channel for distribution. It may include the buying pattern of consumer, type of the product is perishable or automobile, weight and bulk and it also depends on the company's resources. The main affecting factors are organization objectives, types of products, nature and extent of market, buying habit of customers and channel availability. The firm has also to decide on the intensity of distribution. If it is intensive then the number of middlemen required would be more at each level of distribution. But if the distribution is limited as in the introduction or trial stage, say, then there will be less number of middlemen. Once the service firm has decided on the channel, it now has to choose specific firms. If Ohm Kotak chooses to sell its insurance online, it could choose from a host of e-business firms like Rediv.com, Bazi.com, Yahoo.com, etc. The service firm has to choose specific firms in specific towns that would enable it to cover specific markets. The service marketer should assess the strengths and effectiveness of the intermediary member in achieving the desired market penetration. Now let's study different channel of distribution. There are two types, direct and indirect. A direct distribution channel is where a company sells its products direct to customers. While direct channels were not popular many years ago, the internet has greatly increased the use of direct channels. Additionally, companies needing to cut costs may use direct channels to avoid middlemen markups on their products. Selling agents and internet sales are two types of direct distribution channels. Selling agents work for the company and market their products directly to consumers through mail order, storefronts or other means. The internet is an easy distribution channel because of the global availability to consumers. The indirect channel is used by companies who do not sell their goods directly to consumers. Suppliers and manufacturers typically use indirect channels because they exist early in the supply chain. Depending on the industry and product, direct distribution channels have become more prevalent because of the internet. Distributors, wholesalers and retailers are the primary indirect channels a company may use when selling its products in the marketplace. Companies choose the indirect channel best suited for their product to obtain the best market share. It also allows them to focus on producing their goods. Now let's discuss factors affecting channel of distribution. They are nature of product, consumer location and coverage, channel success factor, cooperation desired, channel rights and responsibility, capital requirements, nature of the products. This looks at product characteristics, perishable products need faster means to avoid product deterioration and bulk product needs slow and cheaper means. Product that needs installation and maintenance may need skilled channel members. This will influence the choice of channels to use. Consumers location and coverage. Widely spread population or nation will require the use of many channel members than it would be for a concentrated market or nation. Cost of channel. Costs must always be minimized to increase profits. It should be noted that costs vary from channel to channel, hence affecting costs of goods and services differently, which also affects the margins demanded by the channel members, thus increasing the price of products that pass through those channels. Channel success factors. This looks at channel experience with the product in the foreign market reputation of delivering the right products and services, channel competitiveness, channel profitability, continuity that is to serve the market for a long time, etc.
level of cooperation desired. In exclusive distribution, the manufacturer will retain control over the channel members. In selective distribution, the manufacturer uses a few channel members. This allows the manufacturer to adequately cover the market with more control. But with intensive distribution, many channel members are carrying the products and as the channel grows longer, the ability to control reduces. Channel rights and responsibility. The chosen channel will have sufficient power over their activities in the select foreign market. The more the rights and responsibilities the manufacturer retains the more. He is exposed to risks in the foreign markets and vice versa. Capital requirement. The amount of capital required is influenced by factors like transport facilities needed, warehouses, cost of product development, quantity needed, etc. This implies that the choice of channel to use is influenced by the capital requirements for an effective job to be done. In summary, international marketing channels to be used by different manufacturers worldwide when distributing their products to their respective customers internationally need to be chosen carefully, putting into consideration the above discussed factors which affect their choices. This should be done for the success of the manufacturer's business and also to ensure customer satisfaction globally. Now the turn comes to study the strategies for effective delivery through intermediaries. There are three types of strategies. Control strategies, empowerment strategies, partnering strategies. First is control strategy. This strategy can be implemented only when the service principle is more powerful and assertive than the intermediary and dictates the term of control, compliance and conformance. The service principle derives its power from the following. It possesses intimate knowledge of customer preferences. It is in possession of unique services and process know-how which has customer demand and loyalty. It has access to economic resources and wields other forms of economic power like deciding compensations, territorial overrides, new promotional schemes, setting goals and targets, etc. Thus, it can ensure the best performance of the intermediary if it can set up the standards for revenues and service performance, measure results and accordingly administer compensation. Second one is empowerment strategy. This strategy is mostly used when the service principle is new and the intermediary is a known player, financially strong and has local clout politically. The service firm thus becomes non-assertive, lacking the power to govern the channel through control strategies. A lot of autonomy and flexibility devolves on the intermediary with the belief that participation instead of plain acquiescence would bring out its talents. Empowerment of the intermediary is done by providing information, research and processes that will help them to perform better. Third one is partnering strategy. This approach is used when the service principal and the intermediary both are on an equal footing in the power equation. It seeks to synergize their skills and strengths, stressing the importance of trust and relationships. This strategy has the highest potential for being effective and the stress is to learn as much as possible about the customers, improve service delivery, communicate effectively and build standards of excellence. Partnering becomes most effective when there is successful goal alignment between the service principal and the intermediary. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Intensive distribution is used commonly to distribute low-priced or impulse purchase products. Right or wrong? Right. Internet is an example of indirect channel of distribution. Right or wrong? Wrong. Empowerment strategy is mostly used when the service principle is new and the intermediary is a known player, financially strong and has local clout politically. Right or wrong? Right. Let's revise. A distribution channel consists of a set of people or firms who are intrinsically involved in the transfer of goods or services from the producer to the end user. The end user could either be an individual consumer or an industrial consumer. The decision regarding service location depends upon the degree and type of contract and flexibility as consumption. It is not necessary that firms in similar services should have the same distribution systems. 
nor is it necessary for service firms to choose only one distribution system. A service firm should choose a distribution channel in line with its strengths which would satisfy its customers and beat the competition. Choosing a distribution channel involves decisions regarding role of distribution, the type of channel, the intensity of population and the choice of specific intermediaries. There are two types of channels, direct and indirect. The primary factor that affects the choice of channel for a service firm is the nature of the market and the service consumer's buying behavior. The secondary factors that affect channel choice are the service product, the intermediaries and the service firm itself. A service firm has to adopt various control, empowerment and partnering strategies for effective delivery of services.